what we do here is go back, 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 back. And that should make us live. Hopefully. You never know. Good evening, everyone. Mike here, Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. Over there is Caf at the hot desk. So if you've got any comments or questions for either one of us, please feel free to put them in the live chat. Obviously, if you're watching this as the VOD after, then just put your comments in the bottom and we'll take a look at them, well, when we can. It is Saturday, the 7th of November, 2020. How are you all doing tonight? Hopefully, you're all doing really well, or today, depending on whereabouts you are in the world at the moment. Oh, and we start off straight away with a super chat straight in from Glenn, who's given us four pounds and twenty pence, and says, "Kicking off with some cash." <laughs> Thank you very much, Glenn. Very much appreciated. And if you want to be like Glenn and take part and help support Mike's unboxing and all the stuff we do here at the channel, feel free to uh, empty your wallet in our general direction. Don't worry, all of the money does go in towards products that we do then review on the channel, and then quite often actually pass on then to Discord members in our Discord chat. So if you want to get involved, links will be in the video description for our Discord and all that kind of stuff. And obviously, if you want to support us in other ways, we've got Patreon, where you can buy merchandise like the Mike's Unboxing t-shirts, uh, the hoodies. We are sold out of a couple of sizes on the hoodies already, so they've been going really, really well. Um, not surprising, it's coming up to winter and it's starting to get a little bit chilly. Although today here, it is uh, pretty warm, so I haven't got mine on at the moment and been on the treadmill. Had some McDonald's today, so I had to burn that sucker off. And sleep it off. Wow, well, I'm at McDonald's in such a long time. It was really good, but I'm kind of regretting it now. Anyway, so we've had some. Well, it's been a crazy week, has it? Or has it not been a crazy week? It's been a crazy month. Actually, it's been a crazy year. Let's just uh, write off the whole year. Hopefully, 2021 is going to be somewhat better. Although there has been some highlights during this year, um, not very many. And they have been slightly kind of uh, subdued in some ways with the new products we've had in from NVIDIA and AMD. And for those of you that have been trying to buy new processors this week, um, yeah, very best of luck to you. Hopefully you've had better luck than I have. It's been very traumatic trying to get my hands on a new processor. If any of you have managed to get hold of one, let us know in the chat. I'd be really interested to see what you're getting, what's coming in your general direction. I have really had my eyes on a 5600X. It's something that I've been kind of planning and looking towards for a little while now, and literally, like that, gone. There has been a couple on Amazon at a ridiculously sculpted price, about £100 dearer, which is, what, about $130, $150 more in the US. And yeah, homie don't play that. We are not going down that route. We are not paying sculpted prices for components. Just is not going to happen, so... Yeah, hopefully prices will um, get back to some sort of normality. Obviously, we've got Black Friday 
Although <laughs> most Fridays this year have been pretty dark, to be fair. It has been one of those weird, weird years with the, uh, the human malware and all that kind of stuff. So we need a little something to pep us up. Some really nice pricing on some components on the run up to Christmas and Thanksgiving would be absolutely amazing. Although I've got to be honest, as a realist, I don't think we're going to see those huge reductions that we've seen in previous years due to demand completely outstripping supply, which uh, we've seen with the Nvidia graphics cards and obviously AMD processors. But what we are starting to see now is some actual some price decreases on the older AMD processors, which I didn't think we'd see quite yet. As of today, there was a few bargains here in the UK for the 3700X, which actually for a very, very short while was actually the number one choice in processor on Amazon.co.uk, which really that has been the sole spot for the Ryzen 5 3600 for as long as I can remember. Pretty much since it's been out, that has been the go-to chip. But now with prices kind of fluctuating, even things like the slightly older Ryzen 7 2700X has been seen here in the UK for £156, and for £156, the Ryzen 7 2700X is a hell of a lot of processor for the money. It really is. Six, uh, you know, you said six cores, eight cores, 16 threads, a really, really good processor. And of course, it comes with that really nice Wraith RGB cooler, which is uh, actually one of the better Wraith coolers. So, a fantastic bargain, even if you sold on the cooler for maybe £25 if you're lucky, maybe £30 a push. Probably 20 is more likely, but that brings the processor down to around about £130 for an 8-core, 16-thread processor, which was top of the line in its day. That is a fantastic value for money proposition at the moment. And with all the other processors being pretty much out of stock, it does seem to be like one of the things to go for. The 37NX is the one that I've really got my eyes on, but that is still pretty sky-high pricing, but we'll see how things go. <coughs> A letter says, I have fast internet. I wish I could say the same. Our internet is pretty poor at the moment. I've made some changes to OBS, so hopefully it's a little bit better and the streaming quality is a little bit sharper, possibly. Uh, I've reduced some things and upped some things, so at the moment OBS seems to have not lost... Oh no, it has dropped a few frames, so we'll see how things go. But hopefully we can uh, stay with it. So tonight's show, we're going to talk about some tech and also we're going to unbox some stuff. We've got loads of stuff to unbox today. We are going to go through, do some quick unboxing. We might not get to all of it because this generally is like an hour and a half, two hour stream. So we'll see how things go and see how the chat goes. But we'll try and get through some of the bits and pieces. So let's do some uh, quick hellos to those of you that are in chat. And there's actually quite a few of you in here. So this might take a while, but we've got Ugly Bob, Ghost Adder, British Noob, Sky Stalker. Uh, JAR 2019, it was Paul Bakewell, who else am I missing? Adam was in earlier. Adam from the Blind Divide, yep. uh, Rob Bomford, Harold Arum, am I missing anybody? Angry Doge, David says he's David. first again. David Aitken's in the house as well. Aletta. Aletta, Glenn. I think that's uh, pretty much. Zaki says hi. John Sullivan is in the house also. Click Tech Kev. O'Reilly SLP. Thomas Mark. Mark M. Am I missing anybody? Muckless. There's loads of you. If I've missed anyone out, I do apologise. I'm scrolling down quickly to see if there's anybody that I've uh, missed out. Ladios. Erin's in the house as well. Which Erin is that? Also Yusef. Rich Winrow. Wow. Tongue twister there. Uh, I think that is it. And the giant killer says, hi everyone. Okay, so I think that's pretty much up to date with uh, saying hello to everyone. <sighs> don't know what it is today. It's really, really warm. I hope I've not got coming down with the... Uh, the human malware it is really warm in here today. <sighs> Didn't think I'd be saying that. It was freezing in here earlier. <laughs> oh dear. I'm not reading out what Aletta said. Tristan G says hi from Seattle. Vote Gauntlet 
Amiga 500. We're nice to have one of those. Erin Smith says, hey. Get that back door open. Yeah, could do with it. It's really, really warm in here. We have been moving some stuff around. I have boxes and boxes stacked up everywhere. And actually, things haven't got much better, as you can probably see. So tonight, we're going to be taking a look at uh, various products which we've had sent in during the period of this week. Uh, some of which I've had a, a bit of a sneak peek at myself already. Uh, probably the main one, the one I'm probably, well, I'm not most pleased with because that kind of, yeah, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> the one that I've been the most kind of cautious about, I would say, is this one. This is the XFS Radeon 5700 XT. This is the triple dissipation or TD model, 8 gigs. This is what I would consider at the moment to be pretty much the best bang for buck in the GPU market, especially for that kind of mid to mid to mid high range. Obviously, it is a slightly older card, although this particular version was only released, believe it or not, in about April of this year, which seems uh, really phenomenal. XFF, XFS rather, learned a lot of mistakes that they made with the Thick 2 which was their kind of initial release of the 5700 XT and the 5700. The Thick 2 had a few little, little cool, tongue tied tonight. The original versions of the Thick cards actually were thick in more ways than one, but they suffered with some of the cooling. Now XFS, XFX, right, that's gonna be a real, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna struggle on this one. They basically learned their mistakes and they refined the build changed a few things and actually reduced some of the core clocks to bring out this model, the TD. So what they've done is reduced it down from the FIC3, a little bit cheaper, a little bit slower, although realistically you're gonna to need to do benchmarks to actually notice any difference. Judging from what I've already experienced using this card on a few benchmarks, especially in Far Cry New Dawn, which uh, is actually quite a stressful program to run, this thing absolutely flies. And Flight Sim 2020, which again, most of us know that is an absolute beast of a program to run at a higher resolution with a lot of the things turned up. But this takes it all in its stride. For me, this is pretty much where the bang for a buck is. And obviously at the moment, you can't get a current generation Nvidia card for love nor money. And when the AMD ones actually do surface, realistically, I think we know what the deal's gonna be. They're gonna sell out in pretty much record time. So if you're planning a build for Thanksgiving, Christmas, possibly New Year, the 5700 XT still does hold a place very dear to my wallet, which is very, very nice. So we'll be having a look at that. We'll take that out of the box and have a look at it as well. In a moment, if you want to pick one of these up, actually, I should mention that, these are about £350 at the moment, which if you consider where that is in the kind of this grand scheme of things, you've got the RTX 2060 Super, which is about the same, maybe a little bit more expensive, but definitely a slower card. You've then got, if you can find one, an RTX 2070, which again, in majority of titles, this does beat. It, that is more expensive as well. And obviously you've got the RTX 2070 Super, which seems to be pretty much easily available in most places, which does beat this in most titles, but trades blows in others, and is anywhere from about 50 to 100 pounds dearer. So definitely the 5700 XT, especially this particular one, the XFX one, does seem to be a particular bargain on Amazon. So we're gonna do a full review of that. I'll do a quick unboxing so you can have a quick look at it later on. But yeah, this is the one that I've, uh, I'm really pleased with this. So actually, I tried to buy this, or actually the thick version, about three or four months ago, maybe even slightly longer. And for some reason, it was lost in the post. They tried to send out two and they never turned up. So I was a little bit gutted, but I may do with my 2060 KO. But there is a massive jump in performance between the 2060 KO and this. There really is. And the 2060 KO cost me about 270 because it's on special offer. At the moment, they still go for about 300 to 320. So an extra 30 to 50 pounds roughly here in the UK for this does give you a massive, massive jump in performance. And also is so quiet. It is ridiculous how quiet this is. Also, it's got dual BIOS, which the KO cards don't have. So for those of you that are into overclocking or maybe still doing a little bit of mining, this is actually ticking a lot of boxes. So anyway, we'll take a closer look at that in a little while. And actually be interested, how many of you actually watching at the moment have got a 5700 XT and are using it on a daily basis?
John Sullivan says I got the Red Devil card, an amazing card. Yeah, I was really, I was really hesitant about the XT, the 57 XT. I was always kind of like, mm, should I just get a 5700? But now the prices are dropping, and obviously now because there's pressure from Nvidia and the newer AMD cards coming out, I think I would be pretty confident in saying that some of the older 5700 XTs coming up to Black Friday, we might see them as low as 300 pounds which would be fantastic value for money. Anyway, what else have we had? <laughs> God, let's have a look at some of these coolers. So this was one which is actually only literally came in a couple of hours ago. Uh, most of you have probably seen the reviews for this already out and about. This is the A500 from Corsair. This was their first foray into air cooling and was uh, generally well received, although there was a few things that they could have done better. Um, one of those things was definitely the price. For a twin fan 120mm tower cooler, there's a lot of competition on the market. And they all perform reasonably within kind of almost error of margin, especially when you're looking at the sort of 25 to maybe £55 mark. There's not a massive amount of difference in them. So this was actually on a special offer from ebuyer.com here in the UK. Also, I've seen it on Amazon at, now at reduced prices. Have a guess in the chat right now, how much do you think this actually costs now as of November 2020? Considering when it came out, it was around about 70 to 80 pounds. Let's wait for the... Uh... <laughs> British Noob says 30 pounds. Okay. Dave Aiken says I'll be quiet. 50 pounds, we've got 29.99. 350. 35, 60. So we've got some pretty reasonable guess ghost adder most of the discord guys know i've already posted this on the discord in the bargain section this was 29.99 i paid a little bit of extra postage to get it here today because i wanted to show it in the stream um for 30 pounds this is a lot of cooler for the moment look at the size of the box like comparatively this is a flight stick which is obviously a big item and the corsair box is bigger this thing's going to be huge. Now, taking it into another comparison, this is a pretty much run-of-the-mill 120mm cooler, which effectively this is as well. And David posted look at the size difference. What's that? David Aiken posted the... Oh, did he post it as well? Where did I post it? I must have posted it. Did I not post it? David oh, David did. I, yeah, I saw it after. That's right. Sorry, David. <laughs> taking away some of your credit. <laughs> For 30 quid, this is in Actually, what the hell? Let's, let's take this sucker out of the box because I'm intrigued to see how big this thing actually is because it does look absolutely huge. So I'm going to need some kind of knife instrument. Matches the box. Yeah, yellow as well. Corsair scissors. My, more Cor Corsair scissors. Available from Corsair for £100. Or Mike's unboxing for £8.99. Yeah. yeah, or Ikea 3 for a pound. Uh, this was from ebuyer.com. Was it on scan? Uh, it was on scan. Scan.co.uk are doing them as well. Uh, Amazon are doing them. I think most places at the moment in the UK are selling these for reduced prices. Actually, if there's uh, viewers in uh, Canada, America, etc., what's the deal over there for you guys? Is it you get any similar sort of price deals at the moment on these, or is it something that is uh, mostly for us folks over in the UK? Uh, British Noob says it's cheap on overclockers as well. Harold says I like the Corsair box colours. O'Reilly says the Corsair cooler looks like the weight will break a board. It does, yeah. Actually, how much does it weigh? We'll have to get the uh, the scales out and find out that. I'm struggling to get into this. But what a ridiculous size cooler. Come on. Come to daddy. This is why you shouldn't bite your nails. It does make it rather difficult to get into boxes. Oh, I'm going to have to stab it. For those of you that are scared of the sight of blood, look away right now. Soaked in Jill says, it's not a great CPU cooler. Now that is an interesting comment because 
obviously when these were reviewed originally by the likes of Gamers Nexus and uh, Hardware Unboxed, who did I see it reviewed by as well? The, um, oh God, I can't think of his name. I did see, see a couple of people reviewing this and it was kind of like, okay, it does a reasonably good job, but it is pretty expensive for what it is. But for £30, that does make a massive amount of difference in the kind of price to performance scale. So let's see if we can, is that lined up? Yes, it is, you can see now. So what do we get first of all? We get some tissue paper. That's uh, kind of handy. One thing you can say about Corsair, their packaging is nice. So we've got our accessories box in banana yellow. And what do we get in here? So there is a installation guide. Not in color, but should get the job done. And inside we get the retention bits and pieces. So we've got Intel retention, LGA 20XX, etc. There is some pretty beefy back plates in there as well. We've got a separate box for AMD retention. So that's AM3, AM2, FM2, FM1. And then you've got a separate box of standoffs there for AM4, which is pretty much the same deal as what you get with um, Noctua coolers by the look of it. It does look very similar setup, those little uh, noggins, whatever you want to call them. And also we get some thermal paste, a couple of cable ties and a nice braided splitter cable. Obviously two fans go into one header, just in case you've got a board that doesn't support both. So, not bad at all. Everything you'd need, which is good. So these come with the, uh, the ML120 fans with uh, PWM. Now, from what I can remember from the ML120s, you're looking at roughly, I think it's 400 RPM up to about 2200. I'm trying to see specifications wise. Oh no, I was close. Fan speed 400 to 2400 RPM. And at full speed, you're looking at 75 cubic feet, uh, 25 CFM. And that is at 37 dBA, which is uh, pretty decent. The heat plate is rather uneven. Okay, that's something we can definitely look at. Holy shit. <laughs> this thing is huge. It really, really is. Oh my God. Literally, oh my God. Now that actually does look the business. That is impressive. That really is. Incredible. I can't see the size on that camera. Good. Yeah, you can't really get an idea of how big it is. It is huge. I do like this, all this stuff going on here, matching with the sides there. That is really, really nice. So let's have a look at the heat plate and see how bad it is. So that actually doesn't look too bad. It's polished, so it means it's uh, been finished to some extent. You've got the paste pre-applied on there with gaps in it as well, so that when it applies pressure, that will squidge out nicely. And you've got a mixture of heat pipes there by the look of it. So it looks like you've got probably two six mil pipes and maybe two eight mil pipes by the look of it. And if you can see that on the camera there. So yeah, about, that looks like eight mil in the middle and two six mil pipes, which actually could hinder it slightly in cooling. Would it be nice to see some slightly bigger pipes there. The finish is actually really nice in that kind of, um, it's like a, a gunmetal gray or like a, a black chrome. I guess black chrome or nickel. And you've got these really nice fans, the ML fans. Look at that. Can you do a head comparison? A head comparison? 
So let's have a look, head comparison wise. So <laughs> it's bloody massive. It's a, it is head sized, isn't it? It really is huge. Turn it around that way because you're edging. That way? Yeah. I did that, just first of all. Okay. There's Kath's got a big delay on her screen, so you can't really see. There you go. Holy. Right, let's see how heavy this thing is. I gotta be honest with you, I wouldn't even hazard a guess at how heavy this is. It's gonna be big. So, this is going to be in grams. Grams go up and down? Yes, they do. Don't eat my food. Holy crap! That is definitely the heaviest cooler that I have ever seen. Um, you can't actually see that from there, can you? Did you actually say that? Because that's just what Sky commented. Did you read that comment? When, no. you just Maybe you can, zo you can see that if you zoom in a little bit. I'm not going to zoom in because yeah. it's going to make the camera go funny. But it's 1,525 grams. So basically 1.5 kilos. That is motherboard destroying kind of territory. You wouldn't want this in a PC that's traveling anywhere. You really wouldn't. That is insane. And we've got a super chat come in from British Noob. Thank you very much, kind sir. Uh, Maisie's in the house. Hello, Maisie. Oi, Maisie. <sighs> that is a ridiculous cooler. It really is ridiculous. Ugly Bob says even my mum thinks that's big. That is, uh, that is insane. You need to compare it to Bob's arms. It is bigger than Bob's arms, definitely. Now, I'm not going to do the peel on the top here, I don't think, at the moment. Oh, actually, I'm saying that. So we've got a, like a burst aluminium on. I don't know why that is there. That doesn't really serve any purpose at all. But I am generally interested to see how this performs. So this should... I can't remember what happened in the other reviews, I'll be completely honest with you, and it kind of... It was one of those things that I saw the price of it and I thought, no, there's no way on God's green earth that I'm ever going to afford or even justify spending money on this thing. Yes, it looks nice. It's a good quality product, but essentially it is, it's way out of my league price wise. But at £30, it does change things dramatically. And also the ease of fitting. Now that, you nearly killed the laptop. That is a beautiful thing. So that mounting mechanism on the side where it just slides on, that feels so premium. Done, that really does. Baby, well, I'm genuinely impressed. And that doesn't happen very often, I've got to be honest with you, probably down to me buying cheap stuff all the time, but that mounting mechanism it does put almost every other cooler that I've ever used into a very, very serious doubt of, like, this is the way to go. This kind of fan mounting is definitely extremely nice to use. How easy is it? Yeah, and that is genuinely a beautiful thing. So for those of you that are into, uh, Maybe I've trapped that cable in there a little bit. That's probably not so good. Faulty, RMA. For those of you that are uh, maybe in slightly dustier areas, or maybe you're into your DIY and you've got lots of uh, dust and debris, or maybe you've got cats or you smoke or vape or whatever the case may be, you know what it's like trying to get fans out of your cooler for periodic maintenance is a complete pain in the ball sack. It really, really is. So to be able to just unplug the fan header slide these out, give the uh, the fins in there a little bit of a, a dust out and to run a vacuum or whatever over these fans. That is a, that is a game changer, it really is. That's a really nice mounting mechanism. It, it's, it's worth it for just the fans. Yeah, for, for 30 pounds, like these fans on their own, the ML120s, 
I'm sure they're in the region of about £15 a piece anyway. And we know they're obviously good fans. The Corsair fans are very, very good. Hmm. Yes. I am suitably impressed. And that mounting mechanism is really nice. Certainly beats the hell out of springs, that's for sure. I'm actually a bit unsure about opening the other box cooler now because it's not going to be... Uh, it's not going to be in the same league as this. I think I've just spoiled myself. Glad you got a big enough case. You will need a relatively large case. So measurement wise for this, let's have a look at measurements. So we're looking at whew, that's 180 mil. That is with the protective base on as well. So let's probably take that off because that is going to add a, a little bit to it. So I think that's about as flat as we can get it. That doesn't take a lot off. I think that's still about 170, 175 mil. So you are going to need a particularly large case for this. This might actually end up going in the Kogelink behind me, the Stronghold, not the Stronghold, the Citadel, because that actually has a ridiculously good mounting depth. So it might go in there. But ideally, I want to put this in my Corsair, um, the 465X case. That would be nice. calf has got her hand up. Is it? Uh, probably not then. Shanky, uh, yes. In your situation, most motherboards now do come with a, a multitude of connectors. So for those of you who haven't seen Shanky's question, it's basically if you've got an eight pin and a four pin connector on your motherboard, do you actually need to connect up the four pin, the extra one? Realistically, in most cases, no. If you're doing some serious overclocking, then it's very useful to have that extra bit of juice getting into the system. But for the reality is most people are probably never going to need it. I don't think I've actually ever connected up an additional four pin connector on any motherboard I've owned currently. Although that may well change with uh, more modern CPUs. Now, how did this go in here? Nope, nope. Okay, I'm stuck. There we go, I think that was it. Oh, it comes with a cool screwdriver as well. Nice Corsair screwdriver from doing the mountains, because that is one thing which is actually quite difficult to get to, because the screw mountings are at the bottom. So that top cover with the um, plate on the top, that actually comes off. So you just pop that off, and then that gives you access down inside to do up the screws. Again, that is another nice mounting mechanism. Although I would say realistically, you're probably gonna have to lie your motherboard down flat on its side. Otherwise it is gonna be uh, slightly traumatic. But we'll soon find out when I do the full review, which hopefully will be coming up in the next, uh, next few days. It does appear, that sucked. Uh, it, actually, is that magnetic? Ooh. No, it's not. It's not magnetic. That is going to be... Mm. No, it's not magnetic, but the screw does fit in particularly well, so... Okay. Again, it's only designed really for their fixed mountains, so... It's not the end of the world. I do. He's absolutely right. Anyway, so we've had a, a little look at that. I think for 30 quid... That is phenomenal value for money, and it's going to be very, very difficult for any manufacturer to compete with that at 30 quid. That is a phenomenal bargain. And I'm very pleased with it, which actually is quite an unusual thing for me these days, because normally I find something to dislike about stuff. Something was too expensive, or it's too difficult to fit. But I think that, as long as the cooling's up to par, which realistically it should be, a live video of me installing it. Um, yeah, I probably could do that. To be honest with you, it looks like next week, due to the uh, pending doom of lockdown and all that stuff, it looks like I'm going to be furloughed from work. So I will have a little bit of extra time to be doing some more videos. So that is a, uh, a very distinct possibility, my friends. So that is that. Now, what should I look at next? I'll tell you what I'll look at. Actually, saying that, I'm going to grab a drink a minute. Or actually, I'm going to get Kaf to grab me a drink. 
McDonald's is very dehydrating. And makes you very sleepy. And yeah, it makes you sleepy. Thank you very much. Did you see what Simon Arden did? He no. took a screenshot of your head comparison and put on your tail clothes. <laughs> Thanks, Simon Arden. Bless you. Okay. Oh, that's better. Right. This one is going to be something which some of you may not like, but I actually, I dig this. This is pretty cool. Easy SMX. Um, they've been kind of not working with us, but they've been associated and we've done some unboxings for them before. We've got a pretty good relationship with them, so they send us a few bits and pieces. It's generally budget orientated stuff, so uh, controllers, headsets, that kind of stuff. So they reached out to us and said, Mike, do you want to take a look at our RGB headset? And it's like, oh God, here we go, another RGB headset. So I'm kind of like, okay, what's the deal? And they're like, basically, it's ridiculously cheap and it's pretty decent. Do you want to take a look? And when they said that, it's like, well, come on, give me something to work with. It's like, don't worry, we'll just send it to you. Tell us what you think. So, RGB headset. Now, this isn't for everyone. Obviously, it isn't a premium brand. Easy SMX are not necessarily renowned for that kind of thing, but the coolers are sold out. They, the coolers are sold out. Amazing. So this is a cheap and cheerful headset. If you're looking to buy a cheap headset because you don't maybe use it a lot or maybe you want to put it as a stocking filler for younger members of your family or even just for one of your loved ones, this is actually pretty decent. Now hopefully you can see what this looks like. So you've got this satin matte black finish, you've got TPE cushions on the ear cups and also on the headband. So TPE is basically an upgrade of the synthetic leather that we generally tend to get. And actually it does feel more like leather than I've known before. So really nice and soft, you've got 40 mil drivers on there, so decent bass and all that. I have had a listen to them, music, movies, games, etc. Yeah, no issues at all, sounds absolutely perfect. You couldn't really fault it. It has got connectivity for a 3.5 mil jack for your microphone and also for your headphones. And it also has a USB connection. Now the USB connection is purely for the RGB illumination. So if you don't want RGB illumination, don't plug it in. And you've got yourself a decent headset for 20 quid. Did I say it was 20 quid? It's 20 quid. Like 20 quid isn't a lot of money these days for anything, let alone a pretty decent headset. So it's nice and comfy, looks the deal, fully adjustable sides. Pla the Corsair. Yeah, it'll probably fit over the Corsair fan just about if we stretch it. But the nicest thing about this that I didn't expect is the microphone. So you've got a mic boom, which just folds down. Can't really see one. And let's see. So there is the, the side. So you've got this mic boom, which just folds out of the way if you're not using it, which is pretty decent. And uh, it's got some really nice features like the Easy SMX branding on the top, which is nicely done. And the RGB illumination. For actually people who maybe don't particularly like RGB, this is all right. Let me plug this in a minute, juice it up. Probably kill my laptop at the same time. There we go. So there's the RGB illumination, which you can hopefully see. So you've got the color flow, but the nice thing is you can change the RGB by twisting the sides. So if you've got a particular color you like, so maybe you've got your reds, or maybe orange, green, pale blue, but there's very small granular adjustment, which you can probably just about make out on there. I'll get a bit closer. So you can see there's a very, very granular adjustment. So you can actually probably get the color perfect to your rig. But if you just want a color flow, you can just set it to the end there and it'll go through and do the color cycle thing. Again, you've got this microphone, which has got a little LED on it. So if you want to mute your mic, press the button and it mutes it and the light turns off. So I think this is really cool. For 20 quid, it sounds really nice. The bass is absolutely fine. There's no, um, no issues with it. It doesn't distort at higher volumes. And the microphone actually works just as well in the upright position as it does in the downward position. So if you're one of those people that maybe you're on a Skype call or a Zoom call with your boss and you don't want to look like a fool with this gamery boom, just leave it like that. And it still works really well as a, actually a really decent noise cancelling microphone. So yeah, and it works with, you've got an adapter. So it will work with your uh, mobile phone if you've got one of those single jacks. Also laptops like this one has only got a single jack, so it just connects into there. But yeah, for 20 quid, 
I don't think you can go too far wrong with that. Yes, Kath? We've got a local in Andrew Baker. We've got a local. Andrew Baker. Kath, can you open the window or something? It's bloody boiling in there. Is it heating on? Yeah. Is it? You keep putting that thermostat up. I haven't touched it. It's other people. And also you get a Velcro strap as well. So when you're not using it, you can just tie it all up and stick it back in the box, which is exactly what I'm going to do right now. Whew, stroof. The heat in here tonight. Okay, so there we go. 20 quid. Decent set of headphones. A bit of RGB bling if you want it. And actually, I, I haven't actually done the unboxing video on that. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on it first of all. It's a really cool little headset, it really is. I'm surprised it's as cheap as it is. 20 quid isn't a lot. So anyway, that'll be coming up soon. So that is the VIP002S. Uh, we're not on commission or anything for them, so they just sent it for free of charge for review purposes. Again, as per usual, check out on Amazon. Actually, I think it's even cheaper on their own website, but I'm not sure about postage if you've got Prime, that kind of thing. So anyway, EGSMX headset, pretty decent. And again, 20 quid. Not too bad at all. Oh, that's better. A bit of cool air. Whew. Okay. Uh, Kieran Atkinson says, Hello, also, Mike. I found the unofficial limit of the Saturn fans. After having six hooked together, the colours of the fan deteriorates. Very noticeable in white. They become more and more yellow. Okay. Awesome. Andrew Baker, from Kingswood. Andrew Baker is from Kingswood. A local. Very close. That is close, yeah. Uh, Kieran Atkinson says, I got a 3600 XT on the way. Bagged it for 180 from CEX. CEX is, um, yeah, CEX is actually in the UK is a really good place to get secondhand stuff because they got a two year warranty on everything, which is normally better than you get from actually a lot of the manufacturers. So as long as you keep your receipt and all that kind of stuff, you're absolutely golden. Um, did Sky Stalker? Yes. Right. Okay. Next one up is going to be again. This is going to be something that isn't going to appeal to everyone, but for me, actually, it ticks a lot of boxes. So, for those of you who are regulars to the channel, will know that uh, myself and a few others were really into Flight Sim 2020. Although I don't get a lot of time to play on it, but it is a fantastic uh, piece of software. I don't. I, I hesitate to call it a game because it's not really a game. It's more of a simulation. But I guess when you're trying to break in between that kind of nerdy simulation crowd and the kind of mainstream, you kind of got to call it a game. And it is a lot of fun, which games generally tend to be, so you can call it a game. Anyway, I'm digressing now. And actually, I have had so much grief. Ages ago, well, it seems like ages now, I bought this. This is the retail package of Flight Simulator, which comes with 10 DVDs, which I thought, that's a great idea because our internet can be a little bit slow, so downloading 100 and 50 odd gigs of data <laughs> yeah, is a pain in the backside and I did do a video actually of how to copy your installation from one PC to another which kind of is a little bit broken right now but it still does kind of work anyway so I bought a DVD writer a external USB one to try and do this and yeah it was it was a real pain but anyway I've got it all installed now and now I've actually got a graphics card with the 5700 XT which can actually do the game justice playing it on a gamepad Although it's fun and it's very simple and kind of makes life a little bit easier and it makes it very kind of arcadey, to get the real experience from Flight Sim, obviously you have to use a flight stick. So one of our Discord members and actually longtime supporter of the channel, Sky Stalker, who happens to be a pilot or something in aviation, I don't quite. Sky, let us know in the comments if you're still watching. What is it you actually do? I'm sure you fly stuff, you have flown stuff. Anyway, I digress. So Skystalker, extremely kindly, sent me this, the uh, Logitech Extreme 3D Pro Precision Flight Stick, so that I can actually get the full pilot's experience. Now, Skystalker is somewhat of the Tom Cruise of Canada. And so if he's recommended it and says it's worth doing, then who am I to argue? I am just a... English simpleton trying to make a living on YouTube. So I will bow to his superior knowledge. So what do you get? Now this 
Logitech Extreme 3D Pro has been around now, I think, for getting on for about seven to eight years, possibly even longer. So to be in still print production and being used, and actually Amazon's kind of number one seller for flight sticks, actually even for game pads, I think it's in the number one top sellers, there has to be a reason for it. And just taking this out of the packaging, which is actually very minimalist, you get a really good idea of why that is the case. So you get a decent length USB cable, but ultimately you get a flight stick, which just looks and feels the real deal. I, uh, yeah, it's perfectly ergonomic for those right-handed people. You've got your rudder control, which is something which is very difficult to do on a control pad. Also, you've got your throttle on the back here. So you've got a nice little throttle lever. And also you've got all the buttons in there so you can program those to whatever you want within the game. Sorry, simulation. But what is really nice about this is because this is such a popular uh, flight stick, everything on this flight stick is actually built into Flight Sim 2020 off the back. So you plug it in, it recognizes it as a Logitech device, exactly what it is, and all the buttons are perfectly mapped out as it would be for a flight simulation. So you've got your top hat for looking around, which uh, you probably can't see very well there. Oh, you can see even worse there. So you've got a top hat, which uh, Does it come in pulse setting? you can move around. And you've got all your top hat buttons there. You've also got more buttons on the side. You've got a trigger button if you want to set that up for something. There is a rumor that there is going to be some sort of dogfight mode coming into Flight Sim 2020 at some point. So maybe you could fly something like a Tomcat or maybe an old Spitfire and uh, take out some Germans, which would be fun. If there's any Germans in the chat, I do apologize. Uh, yeah. You can get them with force feedback vibration. You can, yeah, there is a force feedback version of this as well, which I think would actually add a massive, massive amount to it. But for... The majority of people who are just getting into Flight Sim 2020 and just want to enjoy it and have that realistic experience, I think this is a, a very good entry point. And the actual kind of uh, tension actually in the stick itself, in the yoke, is very, very nice. It's not kind of all flimsy and wants to just shoot around all over the place. So precision-wise, you're going to have that really nice precision, just moving it around gently. Now, I'm left-handed, so for me, this isn't ideal because how I grip it, but I think it's going to be okay. <laughs> go up a little bit for Ugly Bob. What did Ugly Bob say? Where did you put the batteries? No, that no. looks like something Mrs. Bob keeps in her bedside cabinet. And <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying anything about that, Kafka, because we're not going to get demonetized again. We did manage to get demonetized last week. Um, because we said stuff, so I'm, I'm going to rein that in a little bit. But essentially, this um, I'm very, very looking forward to actually getting this set up properly, putting on the desk, firing up the old flight sim, and uh, immersing myself. So for those of you that are in the Discord, or for those of you that are just members or subscribers to the channel, if you've got Flight Sim 2020, just look up Mike's Unboxing, send me a frame request or whatever, and... Uh, Myself, Sky, and some of the others, uh, I think ClickTech Kev, he's had some flight experience, so we'll get him on board as well, and we'll try and arrange some kind of flight where we can all have a flight together, and uh, yeah, just be really nerdy, which some of you, I imagine, will enjoy extremely. Anyway, so there you go, that is the Extreme 3D Pro from Logitech. Put it away now. I'll put it away, because Mrs. Bob's going to get excited. There we go. Let's have a slurp of this tea. Look at the state of this cup. Got coffee spills all over it. Or tea spills, sorry. Do apologize. <laughs> sorry, I'm just looking at the comments. And it's uh, distracting. Okay, actually, right, here is something. Now, this is going into very, very nerdy minutia, which uh, minutia means the minute detail. So when you're testing stuff, as if you're doing unboxing and reviews and that stuff, you should, in theory, if you can, get really in depth and go for those really small details, because sometimes those details do make a difference. So quite often people say to me, Mike, what are the fans like? Or Mike, what are the temps like? And quite often it's actually very difficult to work out because there's ambient temperatures that move around and wind speed. How the hell do you measure wind speed from a fan? 
it is very difficult to do if you haven't got the right equipment. So I treated myself to a, I can't even pronounce how, what's called, it's an anemometer, I think it's called. This is from Hold Peak Digital Anemometer. So what this does is essentially measures wind speed. There's a very, very low friction fan in there, as you can see, just a very slight breeze and it moves around like crazy. So what you do is turn it on and you've got a LED display, which tells you things like high and low speeds. You can measure temperatures, uh, wind speed in meters per second, kilometers per second, average speeds, minimum, maximums, all those kinds of stuff. Actually, if I put the other camera on, you can see it probably a little bit better. So there you can see, you've got all the uh, all the information on there. Press the uh, button on there so you can see that a little bit better. So this is really good. So you can measure wind speed. So blow into it, there you go. And it gives you an accurate representation of the actual wind speed, which is really handy if you're measuring things like turbulence because when a fan is spinning, you get wind speed. And if you get constant wind speed, generally, that is a good thing. If you get wind speed which doesn't, well, isn't regular or is uh, moving around quickly, that's when you get like weird turbulence or noise. So anyway, I'm going to be using that to uh, to measure the difference between fans. And so far, it's actually been quite useful because when I had the um, the thermal take fans for the radiators and I was comparing those, I could then see what the wind speed was in meters per second actually from the fan itself and also what happens with the speed through the actual cooler. So if you imagine going. you've got your, oh, actually, cheers Harold. So if you've got your cooler set up and obviously like in a traditional sense like this on a cooler, you've got your fan in the front. Normally when they measure the fan speeds, the fan is on its own. They don't give you the measurements of what the speed is like coming through the actual right. fan itself on the other side which is the important one, because if air is getting trapped in the cooler and not coming through quickly enough, that's when your heat builds up. So by using one of these, you can work out how fast the fan is and how much of that speed is actually coming through, or whether there's enough static pressure to actually drive the air through the cooler. Again, it is kind of real minutiae stuff, tiny detail, but in some instances, especially with 120mm tower coolers, the airspeed difference can be the difference between a good cooler and a bad cooler. And also, this does measure temperatures as well of the air going through it. So that, to some extent, is going to be useful because I can measure the air going through ambient and also I can measure what the air is coming through out the back of the cooler and also going into the cooler, which then gives you a delta of before and after, effectively. So anyway, yeah, something to definitely work on in the future. Cooler. Cooler. James is in. James is in, you can tell. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so... Talking of coolers, coolers, as we do, this is another one which has been sent to us from our friends over at Gelid. They've actually been really cool to us and they've sent us over a plen <laughs> <laughs> No pun intended. Yeah, there's uh, another one there. So they've been really good to us and also there's uh, their stuff there. But not sponsored, they just send us stuff because, I don't know, they like us, I guess. Anyway, this is the uh, the Tornado from Gelid, which is actually one of their budget coolers coolers and I've, I, I love a budget cooler especially a 120 mil tower I think really for most people this is where the real kind of the real deal is because he has a Linus moment there's no, there's no paste on there that's good let's get that out of the box so if you're buying like a say I don't know a Ryzen 5 3600 for instance it comes with the Wraith stealth cooler which is basically it does the job, but essentially it's shocking. It's very loud, very noisy, not the ideal situation. So getting hold of a relatively budget cooler, cooler like this, it's actually a really good idea. And some of the coolers at the moment have gone up really, really drastically in price. Anything by Cooler Master, Arctic, um, Noctua, the prices have gone up massively. So some of the other brands which get less attention, such as uh, Gelid, for some reason, these still say at very, very good prices, pretty much competitive with some of that cheap stuff that comes out of China, which we all know you order. It looks great on Amazon and you think, yeah, that looks great. And they give you all the specs and it sounds fantastic. And you get it home and it's basically poorly finished and doesn't work particularly well. And you end up sending it back and then buying a more reputable brand. We've all been there. I know I have. 
So this at the moment is just under 20 pounds in the UK. So for a 120 mil tower cooler is really good. Although having said that, now that we've taken a look at the Corsair one for 30 quid, it does put this into a completely different perspective. But then you'd have to have a big case for that one. Yeah. As Cap says, you would need a case the size of like Noah's Ark to fit that thing in. So that isn't for everyone. We know that already. And also it's a twin fan, so it's big, bulky. Some people don't like having that kind of size cooler hanging off the side of your motherboard. And I totally get it. This is a completely different ballpark altogether. So it does come with their actually really good gelid tornado fan. And this has got an RPM up to a maximum of 1600 RPM. So this is almost a thousand RPM less than the Corsair version. So it means it's gonna be quieter. Even under full load, this is still gonna be quiet, which for some people is actually a big difference. I personally don't like loud PCs. The thing behind me is drive me insane I can hear it. Calf's PC in the morning, I come down every morning, I grab the remote control and press the PWM button because it's just on full blast and it's like, really? That's super loud. But not all people are bothered about it. And like if you've got a headset, then you put a headset on, your PC could be uh, screaming like a V8 and you wouldn't notice the difference. So that's absolutely fine. But for me, I do like a little bit of quietness. So I haven't tested this at all yet. So as you can see, the base plate has still got the sticker on. So I don't know how this is gonna perform. But essentially, you've got four, I think those are probably, they might be six mil pipes. I should read the box. What does it say? Da, da, da. Does it say, does it say? No. So like, so water block. Typically, it doesn't say. It probably does somewhere, but it's actually in various languages. No, it doesn't actually say. It just says four nickel plated power power heat pipes. How can they be power heat pipes? That must be a translation error. But anyway, no, it doesn't say. I could measure them. I probably should. Because I'm gonna have to do it at some point, so I might as well do it now. So the heat pipes are what did I say? Six mil. Yeah, I was bang on. So you've got four six mil heat pipes on there. So this is basically the same as kind of like your Cooler Master Evo 212s, the Freezer 34, 3s or 33, those kinds of stock setups. Ease of installation, usual, usual deal. You've got the brackets in there and you've got the fan. Now, the one thing I'm not looking forward to on this, and I know it's gonna be there, I just know it's gonna be there because I've seen it on the box, but it's gonna be those damn spring clips. You do, as always, get all the back plates and the mounting hardware, which is, uh, Pretty much what you expect, and you do get some of their, is that the pro version? You get the gelid thermal paste as well, which is actually really good. They're, that's the GC Pro, which is pretty good. It's not great, but it gets the job done. The best stuff is the GC Extreme, which we've got there. That stuff is phenomenally good. But anyway, I digress slightly. So yeah, Intel mountains, you've got your AM4 mountains, pretty much usual deal. So you've got your kind of legs, which attach to the bottom, pretty simple. But the one thing I'm kind of concerned about is these spring clips. So I'm gonna give them a go now and see what they're actually like. They do get two sets of spring clips. So if you wanna get another fan and turn this into a twin fan setup, uh, obviously you can do. Now those are gonna go on there, I think. I'm old to fit fan How long? <laughs> Too long. So these are, they go on like that? Yeah, I think that is. I dislike spring clips. Those of you that are, are regulars will know that I dislike spring clips. They just shouldn't be allowed. I, I guess it makes things easier. And also it does things like reduce noise, yada, 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 etc. I don't care. I just want it to be easy to install and easy to maintain. <coughs> so that is the clips on. I'm guessing that is in the right position. So right, let's see how easy these go on, or not. <laughs> it's fallen off already. Holy jeez. Right, so. Clearly I've put those on wrong already. 
times like this, it's always a good idea to read the instructions. Oh, yeah. I'll put it in the front hole when it should go in the back hole. Rookie error. Don't ever join bomb disposal. Yeah. Bomb disposal is probably not the, uh, the ideal thing for me. But the first thing I'm noticing here is actually the fan... Well, there's two things to notice, actually. One is the fan doesn't sit in a particular kind of mounting area as such. Now, for some people, that's actually going to be beneficial because if you've got pretty close tolerance to your RAM, then obviously having a little bit of wiggle room is always good. But I kind of like it to have... Okay, what am I doing wrong? Did I mention I don't like spring clips? That looks like it's the same on the box. Could I do this any worse? Worser? So that looks like it goes on there, but there's nowhere to actually physically attach that. Am I being stupid? The potential for that is extremely high. Wrong hole, Mike. Wrong hole for sure. So those should... That ain't going to stretch all there. Right. As much as I hate to do it, let's have a look at the instructions. I hate spring clips. I really do. A water block is much easier, although much, much more expensive. Uh, spring clips. Doesn't actually give you a very good picture on there. There is the picture. Focuses. Come on, focus, you swine. No, it's not going to focus. Okay, I, I kind of give up. Unless they're two different sizes, which would make life even. No, they're exactly the same. You got two letters. So that should go that side. Let's try another one. It definitely shows them being on the uh, the back side there. That's going to help. Yeah. Well, <laughs> done. Done it, they've done it deliberately. Yeah, let's see you fit those fans in the door. Thank you, my friends. Bob. Ugly Bob's thrown us a fiver and said, let's see you fit those fans in the dark. Well, I can't do much worse. Yeah, there's nothing to actually latch onto there. That does seem like there's something not right there. They can't go around that way. They're definitely showing it on the box. There we go. There we go. So you can see there... Just about, hopefully. You see where the clips go. So the clips definitely on the back. And looking kind of like that. But then there's nothing to actually grip onto. Let's put it around that way because that's the way it's meant to be. That doesn't look right in any way, shape or form because you're not going to stretch it over there. I blame the marketing department. I'm going to put it on the front. I don't care what the instructions say. This might actually get into a part where I have to use cable toys. See, that looks better, but then that's stretched to oh hell. Next Saturday's live stream could be installed in on how the actual hell that's definitely the ridge that it should fit into that kind of works but that is a lot of tension on there and it looks like it's bending it turn the pit side inward so that is that's attached but to me, that looks well too tight. Tristan G sent us two pounds or two dollars rather and says, I hate all wire fan clips. They are crap. Yeah, they are. That's kind of working. That's on. 
but it doesn't really I'm not overly keen on that that does seem to have an extraordinary amount of tension on it but I don't see there's any other way of doing it I'm a bit concerned I'm going to lose the eyeball Sky's daughter says that's correct well the way I got it I'm not sure Ugly Bob said that the clips on the inside holes are in the pan yeah, I did do the inside holes, but then it's way, way too big. So this is on the inside now. And then it's like, there's a huge gap. And you'd have to stretch it. See where the lugs are? There's nothing to actually stretch it onto, so... I don't know. But on the box, it's definitely shown it... Yeah, the box has got it exactly like that. But that is uh, not good. And it won't go around the other way. These can't be handed, surely. Because they all look the same. Yeah, that is how it's supposed to go in, like that. But then there's nothing to actually physically grab onto and it is kind of a universal side so you can mount it either way that's where it should clip into do a tech yes city just glue it on yeah well there i don't know if you guys can uh, can get that that is a very very bizarre setup if you like puzzles because that sh if it was that way round and it kind of latched into there that would make kind of some sense, but it doesn't. And that's way too long to be stretched over from the front, as we've already discovered. That is the closest that I can see that it would actually work, but then that is a really bad mounting mechanism. And the spring's all kind of bent up out of shape. Yeah, if I had a glue gun, I'd glue it on. I do have a glue gun, but last time I did that, I glued some heat pipes somewhere and the heat come on and then the pipes come off. I'm kind of disappointed with that, i got to be honest. That is... Fixing, Putty. Quite perplexing. It's almost like they're not bent to the right angles. They all look like they're the same. Let's see, if they all fit together like that, which I'm pretty sure they did, means they're all identical. So they are... Right angle should turn from the fan towards the heat sink. Yeah. So they're all, the, uh, all the clips are exactly the same. But it's just a, not a very nice mounting mechanism. And it definitely does show on the box. You can see it clear as day. Hopefully, hopefully you can with this camera. But you can see that it's definitely clipped on to the, uh, the front. I'll have a look at the instructions because that is ah dear. So it looks like the Corsair was thirty quid well spent. Now actually, oh yeah, on that bit there, it's shown it actually with a clip on the front of the fan, which is not going to it's not going to focus on, is it? That is frustrating. Anyway, we'll take a closer look at that in another video. I may actually even speak to Jelly about it and say, like, what's the deal with this? This is supposed to be a user-friendly DIY product. Let calf pack that way. The sticking out lug should go to the heat sink. The front of the fan is cracked. Yeah. They fit like the Noxua fan does. Well, that's what I thought, but it doesn't seem to want to do it. But, anyway, we'll... uh. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> so, the next one is the Gelid. This is the 1U. Now, again, for those of you that are regulars, will have seen my little mini ITX system, which has currently got a stock Wraith cooler in it. So, Gelid said, is there anything else you're interested in on the site? And I was like, well, yeah, actually, this is actually pretty cool looking. So, this is a 1U. Can we just stop doing that? Cooler. 
So very, 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 very slim line. The fan is actually lower than the actual heat sink itself. So if you're in maybe one of those really tiny little uh, enclosures where you've got very, very minimal room, this is gonna be absolutely perfect. Now I've actually tried this already in the uh, little ITX cooler, ITX case rather, and it does really, really well. There is two heat pipes in the bottom, which are eight mil pipes. This has only got a TDP rating of about 85 watts. So it's designed for your APUs, the low end chips, obviously if you want to, maybe if you've got a separate graphics card, although it's unlikely if you've got a separate graphics card, you're gonna be going for this type of design. This is designed for those kind of APU builds where you've got very, very limited space. And yeah, I'm happy to report that it does extremely well considering it, how small it is. So to give you an idea of size, the actual whole unit is basically the same size as the AM4 mounting socket. So you've got your four screws there. Got your heat pipes on the base, which is unusual for this small a uh, cooler. And one of the benefits of the air path is because it comes out top and bottom, depending where you've got it, obviously the AM4 mounting situation would be like this. So your motherboard, your IO will be here. Um, your top of your case kind of there, bottom there generally. So the hot air is going to go straight out of the top and normally it's going to line up with your exhaust fans on the top of the case. How heavy is it? How heavy is it? That is a very good question. I think I it's... Don't this is going to be pretty lightweight. I would say, I don't know, maybe 200 grams if that. Ooh, 202. That was pretty decent. I can't believe I actually managed to get that. Actually, don't even work in grams. Yeah, I don't normally work in grams. Or anything. So, yeah, 202 grams. I can't believe I actually got that close to it. That was impressive. Or was it a complete fluke? Does it say on the box? Oh, on the weight it says 206. Maybe I didn't weigh the cable. But, again, a nice little cooler said with a capital Q. How many stone is that? How many stone? Um, I don't know. I don't, grams into pounds and ounces and stone that, I don't do. You can grab it and that on It's got grams or ounces? Yeah, ounces. Oh. In ounces, uh, seven and a quarter. To whomever requested that information. Seven and a half ounces, that's not a lot, is it? So for those that are slightly con more concerned about their CPU mounting and want to save weight, then it's a pretty good way of doing it. Okie dokie. So that is another cooler out of the way. Now time to bore you all to tears. You guys know already, I'm you. We use their stuff in the house already. Security at the moment, especially now with lockdown, there's people out of jobs, a lot of people with time on their hands, crime possibly on the up. So taking care of your house and your surroundings is really, really important. Internally, we're completely covered. Externally, we're not actually not too bad. In our back garden, we've got their look camera. Uh, but in the front garden, or in the driveway, we've only got a slightly older camera from, I can't even remember who it is now. I don't think, no, it's not, no, it's, um, no, I can't even think who it is. But I wanna amalgamate all my cameras into one app. So I'm you, kindly reached out to us and said, do you wanna take a look at our Bullet 2C? Now luckily this actually has got very, very similar connectivity or uh, power options that our existing camera's got. So even the back plate, the mounting plate is gonna be pretty much exactly the same as the one I've got up already. But the benefits of this is 1080p, enhanced night vision, dual antennas, so better reception. Reception isn't really a problem where we've got our setup because the router is essentially in the wall behind. So we generally get about 80 to 90% reception anyway. But I really want it all in one app. It's really annoying to have to like hear something out, maybe at night, fox is going through the bins or some strange noise. And you're sat in bed and you're like, oh God, what the hell is that? 
you don't want to get dressed because it's cold and stuff and you don't want to wake up the rest of the family so it's really nice to be able to just grab my phone open the app and see what's going on you can if you want you can set these up so you get alerts so if anyone goes past and where we live there's a quite a thoroughfare of traffic and people so i don't want a notification every time somebody walks past that's just a pain in the backside you can actually set this up so it is kind of uh, there's an AI element to it, so it will recognize faces and people rather than animals and cars. So that's something which I may actually take advantage of. So I don't have notifications for everything, but leave it so that there is regular notifications if it's people, etc. And it's really nice as well. So say, for instance, I get a notification while I'm working, although furlough, but anyway, you, you get the idea. So if I'm at work and I get a notification saying, oh, Amazon have delivered your parcel, I can have a look on the camera, make sure the parcel's safe and make sure it's not been left on the doorstep. All those kinds of things. Anyway, you get a general idea. You guys know what our security camera is like. But this is really good, and they've actually sent us a discount code as well. So when we do the review of this, if you do want to get one, they've given us actually a pretty handsome discount to the Mike's Unboxing family. So yeah, this is going to be one. If you are looking at getting some security cameras for the outside of your house, definitely, definitely worth a look. I'll quickly take it out of the box so you can see what it looks like. And it comes with all the usual stuff, so you get your instruction manual, quick start guide. And actually, of all the security cameras that we've got and we have used over the years, the IMU ones do seem to be the ones that are more, um, what should I say, more resilient. So if you're um, using Wi-Fi cameras, you know what it's like, every now and then they drop out or the servers get updated, whatever the case may be. But IMU ones, generally, touch wood, have been really reliable and I don't think I've actually had any any outages that I'm aware of other than when we've maybe turned off one of the routers or one of the mesh devices in the house and maybe one of the other mesh hasn't quite taken over so you get a brief notification saying that your camera's offline which uh, normally we deal with very easily and I haven't had to do a factory reset on any of them they've all just worked sometimes you do find with some of these cameras that you end up having to go out and every now and then doing a reset and reset it up into the app which is a real pain in the back so I just want to set it up it's kind of set it and forget it. That is the kind of my motto, really. That's what you want. Anyway, you get a template, so you can stick it on the wall. And it's powered by mains electricity, so you don't have to worry about solar or anything, which, in the moment, in darkest, deepest Bristol, you uh, don't get a lot of sunshine. So the camera itself, actually quite a nice-looking camera. And you've got these antenna, which you can aim wherever you want to. You can have them down if you want or have them up. So you've got twin antennas for better picking up of signals. Really nice ABS construction, really nice and tough. There is a reset button on the bottom should you need to. So you can press that and inside there is a cover. So you can put an SD card in. There's a QR code on there, which you can scan to then add it to your app. So it makes it nice and easy. And you've got this really nice camera on the front. Also, there's warning LEDs on there as well. So there's a red LED which flashes away. Also, it's got night vision as well. So all that kind of stuff. It's really nice to have a deterrent, especially these days, again, if there's stuff going to be left out or there's people lurking around, maybe trying to make a few quid out of maybe something you've got lying around at the front of your house or in your back garden. So, yeah, this is just going to give us a bit of extra security. And to see how the cats react to the foxes. Yeah, and to see the, the cats chasing the foxes or reacting to them. You can, if you want to, you can use this with a uh, power over Ethernet. So it's got an Ethernet jack on there. There's also a blank in plug as well. So if you're not using that, you can keep that covered up to keep the water out. Uh, how long is the power cable? Now, actually, that's a good point because the power cable on these devices generally is way, way too short. So this is a standard uh, connection type. And I actually, on my other one, because of where I got it plugged in, it's quite far away. So I actually bought an extension off of Amazon. I think I bought a five meter extension and that works absolutely brilliantly. So the power cable is, that's about a meter. Two meters, it's about a three meter cable, roughly. So three meters is actually a pretty decent. If you think where it's going to be mounted, <coughs> normally you'd have it mounted round about maybe six, seven foot off the ground. So that's two meters. So then you've got about another meter to get it to a power socket. So if you're maybe setting this up, if you're drilling a hole in your wall to get it out through. So if you get it almost where you've got a power socket, you shouldn't have too many problems. When I do the full review of this, I will actually put a link in the video description to the power cable extensions. It does make life a lot easier, especially if you don't have a power socket nearby, you can extend it. Because it's running on DC power through the adapter, you can extend it a pretty long way, in fact. Or... 
Seven, what? To their oh, right, so IP67, water rate, waterproof rating, etc., weatherproof. But yeah, you can you can mount these in uh, pretty remote areas should you need to. Of course, if you want to mount it even further, if you use the uh, power over Ethernet, then obviously you can take uh, well up to about 100 meters. I think power over Ethernet can go. So maybe if you've got like a, a longish garden, you want to put one on the side of your shed or outbuilding, then. Yeah, it's a good, good way of doing it. So there we go. I, I do love my uh, my security devices. I do. I don't know if it's something that happens when you get older, but most when you're younger, you think, oh, security, whatever. You think to yourself, well, if anything happens, you just go out there and smash them with, over the head with a baseball bat. But apparently you're not allowed to do that anymore. So having some video evidence, uh, you can connect this to a cloud account or also to a NAS, that sort of thing. So you can record all that stuff. So if you do need it for evidence, then it can be useful. You also get the wiring grommets. So if you want to stick it through a wall, you can then put the wire through there and you've got all the rubber seals, etc., to stop water and moisture getting in or out of your house. But yeah, overall, very, very good. Comes with a UK plug, which is nice because quite often you get these things come through and they've got some crazy European plug on. It's like, oh, now I've got to buy an adapter, etc., etc. It's a pain. So it's nice that it all comes pretty much ready to go. I'm actually looking forward to that. I don't normally look forward to doing these kinds of security videos because they are a little bit samey, but I do like the simplicity of these iMU uh, cameras. And like I said, they do work well. So it's not like you're going through all this hassle just to set it up, just to have more issues and connectivity problems and the apps not working or whatever. It's just really nice and easy to use. And yeah, big thanks to iMU for sending it to us. Although they should be thanking me because it's uh, very cheap advertising, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, yeah. Wherever what... this is, where he lives, they just nick the cameras. <laughs> they, that is, that's the beauty of these, actually. If you, people do say that, especially those ring cameras where you press the button. Yeah, you just rip it off the wall. But with these, if you've got it set up so you're recording to the cloud as well, or you've got it so that it goes to your thing, even if they nick the camera, it doesn't matter because even though there's an SD card in there, which is kind of continuously doing it, it also does back up or send it to the cloud and also your phone as well. So chances are you're going to have that information, especially if they've nicked it, they're going to get up close and personal because they, there's, how else are you going to do it? Unless you've got super stretchy long arms, you're going to have to get close to the camera to steal it. And it's normally when they do that, when they get right close to the camera and try and grab it, that's when you get that full on face shot that you can go to the police or to the authorities and say, that's the person who did it. And because it's got night vision as well, you can generally see them in pretty good clarity. So, yeah, looking forward to that. <sighs> okay. So, <laughs> I, I kind of guessed as I was talking about that, I knew in the back of my mind I had visions of a letter in a garden with some kind of firearm and or the dogs. And, yes, predictable. A letter says, my favourite security device is a 44 Magnum Ruger. Red Hawk Alaskan Revolver. Roll up. <laughs> roll up, roll up. You said grommets. Uh, uh, Skystalker, I can always tell when I've had an intruder. Uh, I can't see that. There's always bits of cloth and buttons in the dog pile. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, Crackmatic says, wouldn't they have masks on? Uh, yeah, they probably would, actually. I don't know, because we don't have to wear them in the street. Yeah. The good thing is, with ultimately, with any sort of security device like this, it's a deterrent. Much like in a car, if you've got like a stop lock or someone's got flashing LED on the dashboard, most opportunist thieves, when they're walking down the street or walking in a car park, what they're looking for is quick, easy access and with limited risk. So if you've got a security camera or you've got some sort of deterrent, that is when the opportunist is going to walk on to the next house or to the next car. That's what it comes down to. It's, it's, it's not really security in the sense of protection. It's more security in the sense of um, avoidance, I guess. That's probably the best way of, of describing it. It's basically trying to make the criminals avoid your house and go for the easier deterrent. So if everybody had cameras on their houses, you'd all be in the same position. But if you've just got 
maybe a couple of houses in your street that have got security cameras on, people are going to look at it and be like, well, they haven't got cameras, so yeah, let's leave this one alone. That's essentially what you're trying to achieve. And also, it's a little bit of peace of mind if you're away from the house, maybe you're on holiday, not that you can these days, but if you're away traveling or you've gone away to work, or whatever, it's just nice to be able to go into the app, just keep an eye on the house, keep an eye on your pets, um, kids, whatever, if you've got smoke younger alarm, children people. who've come home early, smoke alarm, yeah, Kath said. There is actually a sensor, so if your smoke alarm goes off, because it's a different pitch, you set, you get a notification on your phone to say that the smoke alarm's gone off, which again, the difference between that and possibly complete carnage of your house is amazing. Even if you're just in the back garden, maybe, and you've, you're, you've left something cooking on the stove, these cameras do pick up that, so if you haven't noticed it or you haven't heard your house alarm going off because you've got a particularly long garden or maybe you're cutting the grass, what, what, whatever the case may be, you're going to get some some kind of notification on your phone. Yeah, it's just, just a little bit of security or a little bit of peace of mind. Uh, Mark Griffiths says, true, but they nick the number plates off my car. I make number plates. Just thought I'd let, put that out there. Especially 3D ones. Uh, David Aitken sent us two pounds and says, looking forward to the reviews next week, Mike. Ta. Oh, sorry. No problem. I'm actually, some of them I'm looking forward to myself. <laughs> the gelid cooler, the tower cooler, I'm not. I'll be completely honest with you. I'm going to have to fiddle around with that and work out what the hell's going on. And I will explain in great depth hopefully it's my stupidity but let's be fair i've had a little bit of experience with cpu cooler so it kind of should be obvious and easy that is the one thing that really gets me about any kind of computer component it needs to be not idiot proof but it needs to be str straightforward and simple and kind of intuitive there's nothing worse than getting something installing it and it's like, well, hang on, that's supposed to work. Why why is it why is it this difficult? It shouldn't be this difficult. So yeah, that's what we'll see. Uh, <laughs> I said that to you. What's that? Ginger biker. Ginger ginger biker, so sometimes Mike looks like an RGB Mickey Mouse fan ears. Oh yeah. I said that on my Hey, Goofy, what's up? <laughs> oh, dear. I'm going to have to move that now, aren't I? Once you see it, you can't not see it. That does look cool, though, doesn't it? I do love that case now. Those fans do set that off amazing. And as if by magic, a super chat comes in from our Canadian friend, Sky Stalker. Ten Canadian dollars and says, I'm looking forward to Mike's unboxing content. Extra time equals extra content. Yeah, it does. I've actually got two videos already recorded, uploaded, and ready to go. I was going to release one today, maybe one tomorrow, but I don't want to push myself in burnout, even though I've got loads of stuff to review. It is actually incredibly time-consuming, doing the Especially research. The and the yeah, card. we've had loads of CPU coolers at the moment, and the graphics card as well. And I've said to the companies, I'll do what I can, but like these things take ages. Even, well, I've started getting into recently doing the uh, the graphs to make life a little bit easier so you can give you some sort of um, pictorial guidance of what is going on. And hopefully, actually, for those of you that have seen the recent reviews, hello, McFly. The sky's broke it. <laughs> Tristan G says, but remember, hit the like button, folks. Yes, definitely do that. Uh, yeah, doing these videos is, people think it's like really easy or like, say for instance, a graphics card. Oh yeah, that's a really th easy thing to do. Just put it in the computer, film some shots of it, do some screen grabs and that's it, you're done. It isn't as simple as that. And films. Siri, what the hell? Doing reviews, especially on graphics cards and some of the uh, CPU coolers and things like that, are really hard work because you have to make sure that your data is correct. Because if you start putting out the wrong data, especially as your channel gets a little bit bigger, you know if there's anything wrong, you're going to feel the pain. You're going to feel the burn. There's going to be so many comments. It just puts more pressure on you. So the bigger you get, I feel sorry for guys like Gamers Nexus uh, and Hardware Unboxed, etc. Because they've got massive fan bases. So if there's anything that goes out which is just slightly wrong, 
yeah, they're going to get a lot of heat for it. So I do try to make sure that my data is accurate and well, as accurate as I can be. Obviously, I'm just a one man shooter effectively doing this from my house. It's difficult to do. Uh, Calf's got her mouth open there. In fairness, Calf does a lot of stuff like the admin stuff, but the actual review stuff and the gaining the data, doing the benchmarking, recording the results, making the graphs, it's actually really time consuming. It does take a long time to do. And you have to obviously make sure you put the data in right for that as well. Otherwise the graphs all look weird. So yeah, it's just really time consuming. It would be so easy just to go, right, there's a box. Yeah, that's what it is. Buy one. Thanks very much. Cheers. See you next time. But I'm trying to not do that. I want to be a bit more involved, give you as much information as I can, or at least the relevant information that I, I feel is relevant to you guys as potential customers. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully I'm doing a good job. The channel's growing still, so hopefully that is the case. Um, it would be really nice to have a, a higher-end CPU to test this stuff on. One thing I do find actually is really difficult between all the different CPU coolers is actually trying to find something which is static. So using a, a CPU is actually a really difficult thing to do. You can, in some cases, you can modify it so that your processor is one specific speed, but in reality, who's going to keep their processor at a single speed and are all those speeds going to be the same? So I try and do the reviews with my configuration, stock settings, and as I would use it normally. So that's why sometimes you get fluctuations in data or data which doesn't possibly match other reviews purely because of the way I do it. But I do it as in, this is just the real world. This is my findings as it is. <laughs> Clicks at Kev sent a super chat for two pounds and says, lots of bad chat fraud, so bad, stop the stream. <laughs> We're not going to talk politics. We're definitely not going to talk politics. Not going down that route. Uh, oh yeah, Skystalker says, yeah, the, uh, the support stuff is difficult. You guys are a good team. Yeah, and also we've got the Discord as well, which is in itself uh, quite time consuming. But it's ultimately worth it, and we've got some really cool people in our Discord who uh, muck in, and actually, really, you guys do the bulk of the work. I just uh, drop in every now and then to say hello and steal Dave Aiken's super deals. <laughs> but they do do more than us, though. Yeah, they, do, they definitely do more than us. Ugly Bob throwing another fiver in a pot and says, Kath is going to have thighs of steel at this rate. After the McDonald's today, we both need it. I mean, seriously, I need to get on that treadmill pronto. But I did sore palate yesterday, so I kind of ruined it. You did. You did. Uh, what else have we got left? Oh, we've got the other headset, haven't we? Let's have another look at the headset. <laughs> Gamer tags asking, R5 3600X versus I5 9600K, who is better? Um, 3600X, I think, really. I5 9600K. Depends on pricing, really. That is ultimately what all of this comes down to at the moment. I've been looking through, scouring the deals. Actually, let's let's take a quick look now. I, I said I was going to do this earlier, and I should actually do it. So, at the moment on... Uh, which button do I have to press for this? I can never remember. Where are we? Windows desktop. There you go. Hopefully you can see my desktop now. So this is the current Amazon bestsellers. So if you're looking for a processor and you're shopping on Amazon, which I'd imagine you probably are going to be because, well, pretty much everything else is either closed or boarded up, especially here in the UK. It's very difficult to buy anything apart from online. And Amazon generally are pretty much the go-to place, I think, for most of us. So the bestseller in CPUs at the moment is the Ryzen 5 3600. And for good reason, six cores, 12 threads, 35 meg cache. It is a great processor. I've got this in my uh, video editing PC and it, it covers things very, very well. I don't think really there is a better option. At the moment, you can get the Ryzen 7 2700X for 150 pounds, which does put this into a little bit more context because you've got an extra two threads, extra four cores, Slightly older technology, but still, depending on what you're doing, if you're just gaming, the 3600 is basically all you need. 
for pretty much every resolution, even up to 4K, this is basically all you need. And you can you know that because it's the number one bestseller, and there's a reason why it's bestseller is because it is the go-to chip. If you're looking for something a little bit better, higher up, then you got the number two slot. And this was actually was number one earlier. So the Ryzen 7 3700X at 278 pounds, which I think if this dropped down to 250, would make it number one for sure. That is a great price. Considering the prices that we had in March, April, then it still needs to come down a little bit. If this is like 250 on Black Friday, which I'd imagine it will be, I think it's going to be a, a must-have. Although saying that, the Ryzen 3 3600 will probably drop down to 150 as well, which 100 pounds between the two. If you look at the core specs, I suppose you've got 4.4 max boost on the 3700X, which might make sense to some of you. For me personally, for video editing, I do feel that I need more cores, especially when I'm doing things like the um, the stabilizing, warp stabilizer in Adobe Premiere. That really does suffer with only six cores, which <laughs> sounds weird, but it is true. But on the other hand, the Ryzen 3 3100. I don't know why this doesn't get more love. I know the 3300X has got the uh, unified uh, CCX, which does make it quicker and is faster, etc., etc. but it's basically never available. I've got the 3100 running in the PC, which is currently behind me, and I've played Flight Sim on it with my RTX 2060 KO, and it absolutely flies along. It's a great chip. For £93, for a 4-core 8 thread processor, which is effectively the same spec as an i7 7700K or 6700K, in basically real terms, this is an absolute knockout. I don't know why they're not selling more. I, I would have thought, really, that should have been in the number one spot. I would say that's number one, that's probably number two, and that one's number three. But again, we don't know what the sales figures are, so they're pretty pretty irrelevant anyway. One that did surprise me though is this, the Ryzen 5 2600 being in number four. Now I don't know whether this is due to availability or not, possibly it is, but that is a relatively old processor. Again, still a really good processor, six cores, 12 threads, does the job, but £125 is about 15 pounds more than what it has been and we did see these dip down to 99.99 at one point which was ridiculous but still 125 pounds is a lot of cool not a lot of cooler it's a lot of processor for the money these are the ones which really trouble me the apus how the 3400g is still 125 pounds i'll never know four cores eight threads but if you take into comparison what's above it so 4.2 max boost against uh 3.9 plus you've got that integrated gpu in there the vega 11 which is actually pretty decent comparatively there's there they seem pretty good but i don't know for some reason for 125 pounds that still does seem like a lot of money for an apu i think it's just because it's an apu that's what does it uh looking through it's ages ages Look, we don't get until Intel, Intel number 10, the i5-9600K, which somebody mentioned just now in the chat. Still a fantastic processor, but Intel do seem to be losing favor. And with the 10 series, are the 10 series actually going to make it? Yeah, 10 series, didn't come until 13th and 15th. Scrolling on down through, there's loads of options, but look at this. Ryzen 5 5600X, £396. Now, to put that into comparison, you can pick up the 3900X for that kind of money. Uh, is it even going to be on here? 3900X. No, not on there. Where's the 3900X? That's, why is that not making an appearance? You'd have thought. Oh, they got the XT instead. So yeah, a Ryzen 9 3600, uh, a Ryzen 9 3900 XT processor at £427 against a Ryzen 5 3600X for £30 cheaper when you're looking at literally double the performance, pretty much, give or take. Now I know the megahertz isn't really relevant between the two, and that is an overinflated price. But who in their right mind is going to spend £400 on that when you can get that? 
And if you get the non-XT version, it's even cheaper again, if you can find one. It is just insanity. The world has gone mad. Now let's take a look at uh, graphics cards as a comparison. So best sellers on Amazon. There's the KO Ultra, £300. Pretty decent. £300 still seems a little bit much for that at the moment, but still is what it is. 1660 Super, great card, £250 there. And we've got the 5700 XT there at 399 which again is a little bit on the uh, the upper edge. I still can't believe this, the GT710. How do they sell so many of these? Like, to be number two in the UK for graphics cards, a GT710 with two gigabytes of RAM, and it's only DDR3. That is a horrendous graphics card, but they still seem to sell in the absolute bucket load. They must all be being sold to uh, random gaming in HD, I think. Anyway, moving on. So what else have we got? Don't seem to have many options here for the newer cards. But I suppose they don't sell many because there basically isn't any. This is still a weird one, RX 570, £144. That still seems like a lot of money for that card. Especially if you take into consideration the 1660 Super, or even just the 1660, is a much better alternative for that. Hey, hey. I don't get it. It's a very weird world we live in, and obviously, depending on what Intel and AMD come up with, but this is the, the thick, the Ultra 3, which is a little bit cheaper. So if you're looking for a 5700 XT, that's a pretty good choice. It's still 400 pounds, give or take. I'd love to see these drop down to 350, if not less. Uh, obviously, the one that we're reviewing, the Triple Dissipation, it is about 350 360 at the moment, if you can find one. They are pretty scarce. And generally they undercut the power colour, the uh, the Red Dragon. So similar specs, a little bit cheaper. Anyway, I'm waffling on now. No change there. So there we go, there's a little bit of a look at the best sellers. Very, very strange. I don't know what to do, I really don't. It's like we seem to be playing this eternal waiting game for either prices to drop or stock to come in and you get to the point where especially if you're building PCs for someone like I've got two PCs I need to sell and I'm waiting for rebuilds and stuff like that and it's like you don't want to pull the trigger right now because we're not really getting the best value for money at the moment and I don't think it's going to change anytime soon I think it's probably going to get worse from what I've been told from some of my um, I wouldn't say insiders but people that kind of know what's going on a little bit in the kind of the distribution side of things they're saying that warehouses are becoming extremely, extremely empty. So what is available is not being replenished at a very quick rate. And obviously we're almost what, nine months into the uh, human malware. It was bound to have a knock on effect at some point. And I think this Christmas period, Thanksgiving, New Year, etc., I think it's going to start getting a lot worse. Power supplies have gone through the roof. You can't pick up a decent power supply now for less than sort of 70, 80 pounds. Even the mid-range ones or ones which were kind of borderline whether you'd buy it or not before are still 40, 45 pounds, which is still quite a lot of money for a power supply. You think a year, two years ago, you could pick up a pretty decent, something like a, a G3 EVGA power supply, gold rated 650 watt for in the region of about 50, 60 pounds if you're lucky. So now you've got no chances. Yeah, it's just a bizarre, bizarre, well, it's, yeah, <laughs> it just boggles my brain trying to think of what do you actually buy? And there's someone who is kind of on YouTube and telling people or suggesting to people what they should buy. And even on Discord, like people come up with their PC part picker list. Do you think this is good? It's a really difficult thing to say at the moment, like what is good and what is bad? There's limited stock availability. There are some reasonable deals out there and it's always that thing do you wait i know some people are waiting for the 3070s to come back in stock because they are particularly good value for money and obviously performance wise there's always the second hand market as well which is looking okay-ish at the moment we're still paying a little bit over the odds for a lot of stuff what do you do anyway let's take a look at this headset from Sharkoon. so this is the skiller sgh 30. Mm. i don't ask anyone know or 
brand. Oraco? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did some stuff for them. So this is from Sharkin. This is their new headset, the Skiller SGH30 RGB illumination and also virtual 7.1 surround sound. And it's a USB gaming headset, so no jacks on this one. And I actually quite like USB headsets for some reason that you can just plug them in and it doesn't affect your existing audio setup, which kind of is benefits. Uh, this is a game with, I think it's 40 mil drivers. I'm trying to see what it says. Yeah, speakers, you've got 40 mil drivers, frequency response between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, which is a pretty standard deal these days, and works with PS4 and PC. So yeah, PS4 compatibility, plug it in on the USB and it'll work like a dream. 7.1 surround sound is uh, pretty decent. If you use Windows 10, you can turn on Sonic and uh, that will give you that 7.1 surround sound or virtual 7.1 surround sound. Oh, come on, get out of it. Well, I've made a right pig's ear there. What's that stuck on? Oh, installation guide manual thing. So again, yet another headset. <laughs> Quite nice, nice weight to it actually. So you've got the Sharkoon user manual, etc. And it basically it's USB. So plug it in and it'll work. Ooh. What case is that, do you reckon? That looks like an MSI Vampiric. Probably a Sharkoon one though. So, what have we got? Nice weight headphone. Really nice sponge on the side there, so it's nice and flexible. And the actual, lots of flex in the ear cups. It's actually quite a nice setup as well. Adjustable band on the top, all spring loaded. And it's actually the, uh, I don't know if you can see it very well on there, but the actual uh, elastic. Is really thick so it's not like two strings which they tend to snap on the left hand side you've got the options for muting the microphone so you've got on off switch there for muting the mic if you want to quickly and also you've got your volume control actually on the headset rather than being somewhere on the usb cable so you don't have to worry about where that goes that does annoy some people having the controller actually on the usb somewhere some people prefer it but again personal preference and you've got your flexible boom with, is that a fixed shield on there? All right, that comes off. So you've got a little condenser mic in there on the stalk. And you've got your pop shield, which is actually quite a substantial one. Quite a nice weight to it as well. And um, is it comfortable? Not too bad. No, I definitely like Mickey Mouse. So obviously boom, you can get, actually that's quite a good angle, so you can get quite up close, a bit too close. Or you just flex out of the way if it's uh, annoying you. Yeah, I quite like it. Doesn't feel like it's squeezing my head. It actually feels like it's a little bit open on the back. Yeah, I think that might actually be a bit of a problem. The uh, the cups, because it's actually pretty fixed on there, it doesn't really fit your ear snugly. There is quite a big gap at the top there, so you're not getting that isolation. Maybe you need a bigger head. Yeah, there's not the angle on this on the ear cups. It needs to be kind of twisted in a bit more. So perhaps we could have uh, a problem here for some people, especially if you've got a smaller head because there's no adjustment on those cups really at all, apart from the kind of sideways movement. It'd be nice to have a little bit of more flexibility on there or maybe a thicker cushion on the ear muffs or ear cups rather. Whereas well, me being stupid, but no, they're, qu they're quite tight at the bottom. There's definitely a difference at the top. Hmm. Maybe I have to get someone else to try them to see if they're comfortable or sealing. Hmm. Potentially disappointing, which is a unusual thing because Sharkoon normally do some really good stuff. And sorry if there's anyone from Sharkoon watching this currently. I do apologise, but I can only say it say it as it is. I can't make it up. 
no point me uh, telling pork ears about a product if, if it doesn't fit well or there's some kind of issue. Got to say it as it is. So, yes, I have to have a closer look at that. How am I going to get this back in here now? Just put that in there. That is uh, always a, a bit of a problem with headphones. Is they're very, very personal to people. And it's not until you actually try them on that you get an idea of what they're actually like. But regardless of what the sound quality is like, it's the fit. The fit and finish is, for me personally, is something which I do, um, I don't take for granted. Because it, it has to be right. It just has to be. You can't, uh, you know, that's it in wrong. You can't not have it fitting correctly because if it doesn't fit correctly, the sound quality uh, gets diminished very quickly. You don't get the uh, the full base because it's not sealed to your head. And also you get the distractions as well. If you're actually trying to concentrate on something, maybe you're taking a zoom call or you're just a, in a really kind of high pressure game, then it can be the difference between winning and losing, especially if you, uh, if you're, you can't hear things properly. Anyway, we will take a closer look at those in the week. I'll get George to try them on because he's got uh, hair, basically. <laughs> Whereas I haven't. So they might fit in better. And it, it might come down to that. Maybe the fact that certain people, this just doesn't suit. So, yeah, we will find out in due course. So let's close that down. And where are we? El Tao says, you look like a cyborg. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Martin says, must have a weird shaped head. Yeah, it's your Bristolian shaped head, Ghost Adder says. Uh, Carlo Jackal says, you need to stop looking at those Amazon prices are, as most are third party seller charging well over the normal price. Uh, actually, that's a good point. That is a good point. And I'll tell you what I'll do. In order to... Uh, Confirm or deny that. Let's take a look at a new incognito window. And we'll go to Amazon UK. And let's go to a... Now the reason why that price for the 5600X was more expensive than normal is because basically it's uh, they're the only people that have got them. And they quite often do that. They will show it. So... The card is a, it's a DJ Mike is in the house and on Reddit. <laughs> DJ Mike, um, we're number three. So there we go. So going back to the Amazon page. So Ryzen 5 5600X processor. This is the only basically one that is listed on there that I can see. So that is, yeah, that is the only listing. And let's have a look on there. So new. So there we go. And the next cheapest one is back ordered. Pro Gaming is between, is then, actually did it say the other one was in stock? Yes, five left in stock. So at £396, and they have actually got stock. But that is a crap price. Let's see the customer review and see what they say. Because this is actually one of those things which could put things into a neg negative light for AMD. Yeah, Sculpt. I agree. That is exactly what it is. Sculpting prices. But what can you do? There is going to be obviously people out there that will buy them. I'll be interested to see actually. I might go back to that a little bit later. They did say they had five in stock. See if they actually sell any. I can't see them selling them at that price. Although I guess somebody somewhere with uh, very, very deep pockets or limited IQ will just snap that straight up. It happens. There is people out there that do not value money and just want something so they'll pay the money for it. Although 5600X isn't really what I would consider consider to be one of those kind of ultra desirable chips. Yes, it's good and it is a replacement for probably the Ryzen 7, maybe 3800X kind of level performance. If you're looking at general purpose stuff for obviously single core, then yeah, it's much better than most of the other ones. But yeah, why would people pay that money? Just insane. Hopefully things will get better in uh, in due course, and there'll be more stock available. But for me, still, 3600X, oh, sorry, 3600 
or the 3100 actually make a ton of sense. And if we get some decent deals, Black Friday, New Year sales, etc., etc. Cyber Monday is going to be interesting as well because obviously Black Friday deals going into Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday is traditionally when you get the cheaper stuff for processors and all those kind of PC things. Although it seems to be really now it's all kind of intermingled and yeah, it's the same stuff everywhere else. So let's take a quick look at some of your questions. Where are we? Uh, Irie Wolfman says CCL has the 5600X for 279.99. Do they have it in stock though? I'm purely looking at people that have it in stock because anyone can list anything they want at any price. It makes no difference. But if they haven't actually physically got it and you can't pay for it in advance, like back ordering stuff is a mugs game because prices are obviously going to drop. So um, yeah, someone have a quick look on um, CCL and see if they have actually got stock or whether or not it just says pre order. Or back order. I think it's probably going to be back order. Aletta says there's no Ryzen 5000 series CPU at all on the US Amazon. I think Skystalker was saying the same thing. Uh, Canada don't even have listings. Uh, Leo Gaming 83, should I upgrade from a Ryzen 7 3700X to a 3800X? Uh, no, definitely not. There's absolutely no point. You will be able to overclock the 3700X to 3800X speeds easily, even with kind of very limited overclocking skills. You can get it to the level of that, so definitely not worth upgrading to that. The 3800X was always the CPU which kind of made no sense at all because it was basically the 3700X but with a higher TDP and pre-overclocked. So you use more energy and more money to get what you could get out of the, the next chip down. So no, definitely not. Yeah, Alessa says no, 3% difference is, is basically pointless. Yeah, David Aiken says 100 megahertz difference, not even noticeable in a game or professional application. This is very true. Uh, Leo means I mean the newer GPUs on Zen 3. Um, if you can get them, uh, yeah, CPUs rather, if you, a Zen 3 5800X versus a Ryzen 7 3700X, there would be a, a moderate gain. Although I would say realistically, you're probably going to have to do benchmarks and run Cinebench to actually kind of feel that difference. And that's if you can get one. You're going to pay ridiculous prices at the moment, so I would hold on to what you got. And that is the only real way that we can actually, as a, a tech community, that we can actually have our voices heard, and that is by not paying these prices. Literally, just don't pay it. Hold on to your money. Don't feel that you're in a rush to buy these things. Hold on to what you got, or maybe just buy a low-end processor and be done with it, and refuse to buy anything high-end until the prices come down to sensible prices. Over £2.50 for some cheese. Yeah. CAF refuses to pay more than £2.50 for a block of cheese. And if it ain't on offer, ain't no cheese happening in our basket. And that is how you guys should be. Just keep your money to yourself. Hold on to it. And just force them to do it. Because they will do it. There is margins there to be played with. So there's no point trying to play bag bragging rights. Look what processor I got. Yeah. You spent a ridiculous amount of money on it. You fool. That is basically what it comes down to. A fool and their money are easily parted, I was always told. And yeah, some people just, they've sold their old stuff. They need something, so they've got to get it. Totally get it. In that case, yeah, you need to buy a processor at those extortionate rates. But if you don't have to, hold back. Keep holding your money. Martin Brooks says, mmm, jeez. Uh, the Best RC says, uh, does Kath prefer Cathedral City or Pilgrim? I like any tasty cheese. Any tasty cheese. I think I would, uh, I'd probably go with Cathedral City myself. Nice. James Miscellaneous says, only way is for consumers to stick together. Preach brother, 100% agree. If people saw the markups on retail items, and I have. Yeah, most, most retail items have got, well, not so much sure in the, uh, the PC market, but in general retail, generally most places will aim for a 50% markup. 
So whatever they buy it in for, they double it and put it on the shelf. And that way then they make a roughly about 35, 40% profit after taxes and sales tax, etc., etc. So we know there's margins there. We definitely know that. Uh, Shabadum. Shubadum. 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 Says, uh, I'm interested in building a PC, but proper Windows 10 keys are hella expensive. I added the hella in there just for dramatic effect. Should I buy a cheap product key? Yes, you should. Go to premiumcdkeys.com forward slash mics unboxing. Calf's already put the link in there. Get 7.5% off their existing cheap ass prices. In actual fact, I had to buy one myself the other day for the PC behind me because it was a new motherboard and I needed a new license key. And I thought, do I spend the next five minutes on the phone to Microsoft begging them to reactivate my license? Or do I just go to premium CD keys, spend four pounds, five pounds, just get myself a new key? Time is money, everybody. And actually, now I don't have to worry about the key on the other machine being deactivated. So yeah, for the sake of five pounds, do it. Matthew Day says premium CD keys will sort you out. Yes, they certainly will. David Aikens is off because his Mackie D's has arrived. Right. Enjoy, Dave. <laughs> uh, James McSane says uh, there was a firework in PA I bought for $2.67. They sell it for $25 in Georgia, and the people down there don't know any better. <laughs> James McSane is scalping fireworks. Alessa says, why buy a Windows key when I can nick them off Walmart display laptops? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. I used to love that, going through eBay sales and looking at the PCs with the stickers on the side. It's like, oh, yeah, there's one, screenshot. <laughs> Stuart Cleary's sent us 10 euros. It says, got here late tonight. Great advice, Mike, as usual. Thanks. Thank you, Stuart. Appreciate that. Stuart, I do appreciate your, uh, your things on Facebook. They do uh, brighten up my day, sometimes. <laughs> well, they, in a kind of depressing way. Uh, bloody hell, it's uh, gone 11. Okay, I think we are petering out now. So, I don't think, I think we've pretty much covered all the questions. I would love to get more involved and more in depth into the processor stuff that's going on at the moment, but realistically, I think most uh, YouTubers have given it more than enough coverage of what it actually deserves at the moment. The fact that you can't get stock either is like, it really just rubs salt in the wounds. I, I personally, when I see some of the other channels with like stacks and stacks of 3090s that they're all comparing, or 37, uh, 3070s, or they've got processors they're testing, it's, I, I guess they're doing a the job. They need to do it because we want to watch the videos and we want to get an idea of it. But at the same time, it is a little bit like rubbing the salt in the wounds. Look what we've got. It'd be nice if they actually took the review samples and sent them back so that someone else could review it. But obviously that doesn't happen. So anyway, David so. Thompson asks, how can they charge so little? I assume premium CD keys. Uh, David Thompson, how can they charge so little? Um, yeah, it's just bulk discounts and not being retail keys as such, technically. Okay, I think that's going to wrap things up. Uh, we're petering off now. We've gone completely off topic, as we generally do. We've unboxed our boxes, which has been good. That's what I achieved, or that is what I attended to achieve tonight. I actually got through them all. I'm sure I've missed out something, but maybe not. So, yes, um, we will try and get some more live streams in. We've got to do some builds. I've got to do a couple of case swaps as well. I don't know whether you guys are interested in watching some case swaps, but if you are, then certainly we will try and do those in the live streams. Uh, CS Skystalker says not being able to buy something that is being reviewed is silly. It is. It is a pain in the backside. And for those of you that are waiting for stock, I do feel the pain. I really do. I would love to be able to spend some money, but I'm not spending money at ridiculous prices for what is available on the market right now. So, yeah, uh, if you want to carry on chatting to us and the rest of our community, feel free to join us over on Discord. There's links in there right now, which uh, Kaf just put in. Thank you very much. And I think that's going to be uh, pretty much it. Obviously, again, if you want to uh, grab yourself one of the Mike's Unboxing hoodies for the colder nights, they are selling out fast. We've already sold out of the uh, 2XL size, and I'm pretty sure that 
Is it mediums low at the moment? I'm not sure. We'll have to check that, but we are getting low on some of the sizes. So if you do want to get one before Christmas or Thanksgiving, uh, yeah, get one now. Find out how to do that, etc. Everyone knows how to do that. So yeah, if you want one, or just message me, uh, mikesunboxing.com, send me an email and we'll work something out for you if you uh, don't have access to Patreon and other things like that. So, yeah, that's going to wrap things up. Thank you all for your super chats. Uh, we do greatly appreciate it, and it does obviously help us to do what we do here on the channel. If you, if you want to join the chat, go to the Discord, and uh, you can talk to us there. But other than that, I think that is pretty much wrapped up. Thanks to everyone who sent in stuff for us to review. And again, big thanks to Sky Stalker for sending us the joystick, which uh, hopefully we'll get to use at some point very soon. So good night, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and... Uh, don't forget to smash the like button. And what's the thing I say now? Oh, yeah. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh, dear.